What's up guys, Ben here and today we've got a video all about the Moto G. So we're going to be testing out benchmarks on this phone which will include Antutu, Geekbench 3 and Quadwink Standard Edition. So these benchmarks perform benchmarks on the CPU, GPU and other parts of the phone so we can get a reasonable idea of how it performs but also we're going to be using some real life benchmarks like opening up some applications and booting up the phone for the first time so it's all about speed and benchmarks today let's not waste any time let's get straight into it all right so now we're on the benchmarks and we are obviously starting off with geekbench 3 and this is in plus 700 percent speed so we can get this all done nice and quickly and it took around about three four minutes for the whole thing to be up to a hundred percent so almost done here and then we can get on to the results so we got 338 for the single core and 1120 for the multi-core and there you can see little um other benchmarks and the samsung galaxy s5 is at top on these scores uh on single and multi on other devices and our device is at the top so you can compare next up we've got and two two, and this took ages. I had to fast forward this at one thousand one hundred percent. As if you watched it all, it went on for about seven minutes. It went on for ages, and obviously this is a bit of the GPU as well because it's got a nice uh, video-ish kind of thing here and in a bit. So there's the seven twenty p benchmark. So this thing obviously goes in seven twenty p, and there's the um, video there just testing some benchmarks. And it just lagged out on me, and I thought the whole thing just collapsed and all that. But so I went into the recent uh, apps and I reloaded it up, and I was waiting, waiting, and waiting. And I thought we were out of luck, but then it says good, and we had a 17,510 of score. So as we compare the tiny bit to the Galaxy S5 on Geekbench 3, I'll just check it out and compare on that. And the Galaxy S5 obviously beat the Moto G in everything, apart from the RAM speed, which uh, we got a score of 1,581, and the Galaxy S5 got uh, 1,455. So there's that benchmark, and now on to the final benchmark, Quadrunch Standard Edition, and this was the quickest of them all, that was at 700% as well, and it's actually quite a nice uh, video as well. So we reached 60 frames on the first videos per second and the seconds we add 30 frames and there's our score 882 so now we've had the benchmarks we're straight on to the speed test so i cleared out everything on here so there's nothing on there it's just basically stock there's no widgets no apps on the home screen just the stuff that it came with so starting off we're going on the ok google just asking a simple question and this is how fast it loaded up so it, it loaded up in eight seconds roughly and now we're going to open up Play Store, and that opened in three seconds and almost a half. So it does run quite smooth on all of the Google apps. So that's that. And now we're going on to Chrome, and we'll just check out some websites. And for all I know, The Verge is quite a demanding website. So I went on it, and obviously just then you've seen it was quite slow. You've seen the little white screen, it's going slow. But obviously not all of these tests just rely on the phone. It also relies on my internet connection. And as you can see, we only have two bars there at the top on the Wi-Fi uh, thing. So looking on the Verge again, we do have that white screen that we just had. And a bit of lag here where we just click on a couple of stuff, and then it pops out later. But anyway, we're going to go on to this BMW i8 uh, article. And yeah, so the white screen again. And it loads up in its own time, really. It's kind of slow, kind of fast, depending on what you're used to. So the picture finally loaded up. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of lag here, while everything still catches up with each other. So the lag here is kind of annoying, but also once you got through that lag stage, now it runs smooth, 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 and smooth. So yeah, looking all good there. So what I thought is I would open up a classic website that hasn't actually been made yet, but good old mkbhd.com. So just check this out. So it does say under construction and all that. Don't know when he is actually going to release this website, but yeah. 
So I went on the Apple Store, a less demanding website, but also has these kind of transitions. So we see how these kind of play out in the um, website. So on the iMac 5K display, which does look great, of course, but um, obviously this is just a test. So there is a nice animation there, as the Apple website does like to use these animations using their stuff. And that did load up fairly quick. So that was very nice, very smooth and very, very good. So as you can see, there's a tiny bit of lag there which is, it does kind of happen once you go on like kind of a demanding session or something on something. But as you can see now, we will turn the power off. And yeah, it kind of does take a while just to shut down, to be honest. A bit like on your Apple device when you're just turning, when that little thing's turning around in the middle. But on here it says shutting down. So that lasts 14 and almost a half seconds. So that's all right, I suppose. And now booting up the phone. Also, what I like about the Motorola is that they have a nice animations going on once you're booting up. So if you're just waiting for it, you can also see these. This actually looks quite cool, if you ask me. These are animations here of the world with a Motorola sign. It's got the nice like sports theme. It's got a Woodlands theme and all that. So it's all there. And once it finally uh, actually comes on, we reach... Yeah, it actually takes quite a while, doesn't it? Uh, 35 seconds and 17.17, 17. yeah. So, as you can see, a tiny bit of lag going on here now. Uh, I just slided to unlock that. And look, so there's no apps here. It's all just rebooting. It's getting everything back off the drive. And also, I have got an SD card installed in there as well. But there you can see, OK Google and all that is working now. And just a tiny bit of lag here, it hasn't actually fully downloaded everything yet back onto the device. Still kind of loading some stuff, as you can see there, and now we've got more apps on. So booting up a game outside of Google. Um, here we go, and it's we're on the timer already, and this is obviously Clash of Clans. You guys are probably familiar with this, at least heard of it. Probably most of you played it. And so obviously you've got this loading screen here. It depends really how good your internet connection is, obviously, and how good your phone speeds are, specs, and also how much data you're using on here. But as you can see, it landed at 27.18 seconds, which is quite a while if you ask me for a game. Like, you don't want to be waiting that long for the game, but, you know, not too bad and as you can see there we have a black screen which is kind of annoying and kind of getting a bit of lag after these kind of like demanding apps or games but this is how smoothly games run just a little bit of this table tennis game just running it here against just the, the computer so you can see how uh, smooth it is and all that and by the way I actually won this game against the computer so like I only downloaded the app really for this video but it's actually quite a good game if you ask me so here we go, and then, uh, so that was it for all of the speed tests, but one last thing, we have OK Google, and we're going to open up an app, and that app is Spotify. So getting on with the opening of the app, we're still on the timer at the moment, thumbs up for the timer as well, because that did take quite a lot of time to implement into the video. But as you can see, it landed at roughly 13 seconds, so fairly quick for something like that, and OK Google is basically Siri if you're not familiar with OK Google, it's the Siri for Android if you know what I mean. So thanks for watching the speed test. So those were the benchmarks and the speed times for the Moto G second generation. So it was all good to be honest, especially bearing in mind the price, 150 quid to 180 dollars in the US. Pretty good scores, obviously weren't as good as the Galaxy S5, but bearing in mind the Galaxy S5 runs around 500 quid in the UK and 700 dollars in the US. So that's about, you know, like, three-ish times the Moto G, so that's got three times more expensive. So anyways, I'm pretty proud with the performance it did, especially when it beat the Galaxy S5 on RAM speed. And also, the Moto G second gen kept up with the 60 frames per second, basically all the time, and the 30 frames per second on that DNA type looking thing. You know what I'm talking about. What's Um, yeah. So the boot up times were fairly okay and the app launching was fairly okay as well. So I'll definitely recommend the Moto G at this price point. 
with the speeds it gives. Obviously, it wasn't a internal um, upgrade from last year's Moto G, so if you're not all about the big screen and the speakers, I would say just keep your old Moto G, especially if you've got the 4G you want and you really need 4G because this is only the 3G, obviously. But thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, comment below, and like this video. See you later.